interactions. What the heck? Togon. Welcome to another video. Well, we've been doing a lot of oily macaroni stuff lately, and I'd like to continue that. Except we're not going to directly mention the oily macaroni constant in this one. It's going to be more tangentially related, just more harmonic number stuff. It's such an interesting sequence of numbers that it's just, it's got such a fruitful, beautiful mathematical set of facts to it that I just want to keep exploring. So in the last video we did integral representations of the harmonic numbers. And today we're going to talk about series, you know, so using sigma instead of the Latin S for the integral sign, right? So we're going to be exploring different sums which either add up to that or are related to that, and so I'm gonna consider three different things, three different sums in this video, which I think are all very, very interesting. One of them is a finite sum representation of the nth harmonic number, one of them is an infinite sum representation of the nth harmonic number, and one of them is... so let's get to it! Okay, so as I said, we're exploring some very, very cool sum representations of the harmonic numbers. Joe is, of course, here to support my endeavor. Good friend that he is. He's always wearing some different shirt. By that I mean the mug. Joe is the coffee, of course. Uh, the mug is just his outfit. Um, but back to what we were doing. So, again, let's recall what the definition of the nth harmonic number is. It is the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 divided by k. So it's adding up the first n reciprocals of the natural numbers, right? Pretty simple, pretty easy to recall, and we've proven multiple times that the harmonic numbers diverges as n goes to infinity, although very, very slowly, logarithmically in fact, mentioned that in the last video. But instead of going down the integral route, we're going to go down the infinite sum route today. This first uh, sum that I'm going to show is a finite sum, so it still goes only up to n, um, which means, unfortunately, this is a sum that is restricted to still just the natural numbers. So we're actually going to still, we're not going to be talking about uh, this as a continuous variable right now, we're still just talking about, you know, n equals 1, etc., and, you know, full whole numbers, natural numbers. So we need to utilize the integral representation that we showed, though, and we're, but we're just going to use uh, integer inputs. So it's 1 minus the quantity, 1 minus t to the n, all over t, dt. Because what we're going to use is we're going to use the choose function. Because look what we have. We have a difference to the power of an integer. We can use the binomial coefficients to evaluate what this is. We have to recall what the binomial coefficients are. So if we have, so recall, that if we have a a power of a sum of two different things. This can be written as the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k, which is how many different ways you can choose k objects from n objects, of the first thing to the power of n minus k times the second thing to the power of k. So this is an, a way of expressing sort of a sum of two things as a, uh, I'm sorry, a power of two things as a sum of different terms. And the n choose k symbol is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. So this is just a way, this is the number of ways to choose k objects from n objects. If you have n things, say if you have five things and you want to choose three things from it, how many different ways can you choose three things? This will tell you that. So we're going to utilize this fact to evaluate this as a sum, which is really, really neat. So we're going to utilize the binomial coefficient thing that I just showed you to evaluate this power, this integer power of a difference. And I'm going to switch colors now because the blue is not doing too hot. So we still have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus, and now we have to exchange this numerator for that uh, sum that I wrote. So it's the sum, try not to erase what I've already written, the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k, we have uh, 1 to the power of n, so that's always 1, right? I don't really need to care about powers of 1. So I can just write the second thing to powers of k, right? It was the first thing to the power of n minus k times the second thing to the power of k. So I can just write negative t to the power of k. This sum here is equal to what's in the red brackets right there. I hope that's clear to everybody. And all of this is being divided by t, right? And that's dt. Now the cool thing is, what happens when we plug in k equals 0? Well, how many different ways can you choose k, 0 objects from n objects? You can only choose nothing one way by just doing it. And negative t to the power of 0 is 1, right? So the k equals 0 term here is 1, 
right? But it's minus, right? So the first term of this series is going to be minus one, which means it cancels with that one right there, which is to say that we can just start this series off at k equals one instead. So we don't have to worry about this difference in the numerator, right? The first term of this whole thing is negative one, cancels with that, and we can just start at k equals one. So this is equal to the integral from zero to one of, of k equals one to n of n choose k times, and now I'm going to split up the negative 1 and the t. So this is negative 1 to the k power and t to the k power, right, all over t dt. But now we can simplify this a bit. So what I can do is, because this t and this t to the k are here, I can actually simplify this by simply dividing by t, right? Just take 1 away from the power of t. Because I'm dividing by t, I can just do that, right? And now there's no more denominator, which is really nice. And the better part is, I can take everything in here that doesn't depend on t completely out of the integral, which is the, infin the, the sum, this factor of negative 1, the n choose k function, and these powers of negative 1. I can just pull them right out because they don't depend on t. So I can rewrite this as the negative sum from k equals 1 to n of n choose k times negative 1 to the k times the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the k minus 1 dt. Well, what's the integral of t to the k minus 1? Well, that's going to be t to the k over k. So we will get t to the k over k evaluated at 0 and 1, so t to the k over k, right? That's just basic antiderivatives. And we're evaluating it, this as 0 and 1. If I plug in 1 for t, I simply get 1 over k. If I plug 0 in for t, I get 0. So this whole thing will evaluate to 1 over k, which is exactly what we want. So we end up with 1 over k, and I can simply just divide the power of negative 1 by that. OK, 1 over k. So what we have is a beautiful representation of the nth harmonic number as a sum over binomial coefficients. Isn't that cool? So this is actually equal to the nth harmonic number, right? Very, very neat. And you can plug in uh, values for n and evaluate it and see that you will actually get it. The cool thing about this is that it goes from doing only positive reciprocals of, of the things and then writing it as an alternating sum of those reciprocals with, with new coefficients, right? You can't just do alternating, because if you just do the alternating sum of this, you'll get uh, either positive or negative natural log of 2, depending on which power of negative 1 you have. But if you include the binomial coefficients, it completely undoes that fact that you've got the alternating pattern, and it brings you back to the harmonic numbers, which is very, very nice. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Very, very cool. Relates it to binomial coefficients. Um, I hope that was clear as to what I did. I just did essentially basic calculus steps, and so I hope that that was clear. To see that this is true, you'd have to, that this is equal to the nth harmonic number, you'd have to watch my previous video. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first one I wanted to show you. The next one I want to show you is actually an infinite sum representation, but we need to do a little clever manipulation first. So we need to understand something about the harmonic numbers which I don't think should be that hard for someone to accept. So because the n plus first harmonic number is just the nth harmonic number plus the next reciprocal, as n gets bigger and bigger, this piece that we're adding on gets tinier and tinier and tinier, right? That makes sense. And say we didn't add just the next one. Say we wanted to jump like multiple steps into the harmonic numbers, adding many of the next reciprocals. Well, even as, say we wanted to add the next 20 reciprocal terms, right? As we go higher and higher, even those 20 reciprocal terms are going to get tinier and tinier, right? That, that entire next section that we're adding is going to get smaller and smaller. So what, what I'm trying to express as, as, a, as, a, as an idea is that say we have harmonic number m plus n. We've added the reciprocal of every integer from 1 to m plus n, and we want to take away from it the sum of every reciprocal integer up to m. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter how big n it is, is. It doesn't matter what the difference in the number of steps these two have, because if n is fixed and we allow m to run all the way up to infinity, the difference between these terms will go to zero. Because even if it's a billion reciprocals that we're adding, right, this could be this could be m plus a billion, right? This is m, whatever you want it to be, and this is m plus a billion, right? Well, if we're already at the quintillionth term of this stuff, then the next billion reciprocals aren't going to amount to much, right? The harmonic numbers grows incredibly slowly, though it does diverge. But my point of this relationship, as I'm trying to say, is that if I were to take the limit as m approaches infinity of this quantity, 
So m is going to infinity, and n is some fixed value, anything you want it to be. Some difference in steps between these two. You know, we're adding the next n reciprocal integers. No matter how big n is, those sums will eventually go to zero. The point is that the gaps between any two harmonic numbers, however far apart they are in the steps, as you sort of increase the harmonic number that you're at while keeping the gap the same, the difference between those terms will go to zero. So I hope that's clear. Maybe think about it yourself just to sort of convince yourself of that fact, right? What we want to do, though, is branch out a bit because up until now, we've only explored um, integrals that were continuous real variables or only integer values of the harmonic numbers. But this sum that I'm about to show you is finally going to break us out into the complex numbers. And we're going to have a definition of the harmonic numbers that works for almost all complex numbers. OK? So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to replace n with z. And we're just going to see what, where it takes us, right? Z representing some complex number, right? A plus bi, or x plus iy, however you want to say it, where i is the square root of negative 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to be a little clever, right? Because this difference goes to 0, so does its negative, right? So this implies that the limit as m goes to infinity of h sub m minus h sub m plus z is also 0, right? All I did was flip the difference. But something going to 0, its negative also goes to 0. So that shouldn't be too hard to see. So all I did was flip the difference. It's the same statement. Now what we're going to do is something that's rather sneaky. Rather sneaky, I must say. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the zth harmonic number to both sides of this. OK? So what this implies is that the limit as m goes to infinity of this is I'm going to leave h sub m right there. And I'm going to continue subtracting m plus h sub m plus z. But now I'm going to add the zth harmonic number to both sides. So now, because this is a fixed quantity, right? z is the fixed quantity, just like n was in the previous one. m is what is going to infinity. So z is fixed. That means h sub z, the zth harmonic number, where z is some complex number. We don't know what the restrictions are yet, but it's some complex number. This is a fixed value. So adding it to both sides means that the limit is simply going to be that, right? Because this difference is going to 0. I hope that's clear to everybody. But now the real clever bit is rewriting this slightly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to factor out negative 1 here put these in brackets, and I'm going to write it like that. But now what we want to do is, is replace these symbols for the harmonic numbers with their definition, the, the, that definition of the harmonic numbers, the sum over the first um, however many reciprocal integers. So I guess technically we haven't, we haven't actually said z is a complex number yet because we're still using the natural number definition. But we're sort of going to allow them to be complex in a little bit because you'll see what the restrictions are. And they will be sort of familiar to us if we remember other functions that we've gone over before on this channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of these with their sum definitions that we're used to. So this implies that the limit as m goes to infinity of what's the mth harmonic number? It's the sum from k equals 1 to m of 1 over k minus m plus z harmonic number. That's just the sum from k equals 1 to m plus z. So for now, we're still pretending that z is a natural number. We will allow it to be a complex number in a little while. And this is 1 over k as well. And we're subtracting from it the sum from k equals 1 to z, from k equals 1 to z of 1 over k, right? Same thing. We're just using the definition of the harmonic numbers that we're used to. And this is still equal to the zth harmonic number, right? That's sort of what we're doing here. What's really nice about this is it's saying we're going from 1 to m plus z, and we're taking away everything that goes from 1 to z. So essentially, we're, we're, we're cutting this sum off at the z plus first term, because we're taking everything from 1 to z away. This is equal to the limit as m approaches infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to m of 1 over k. So essentially, we're just starting this sum at the z plus first term, right? Because we're taking everything below that away. So we're just subtracting everything from k equals z plus 1 all the way up to m plus z, right, of 1 over k. And this is equal to the zth harmonic number as before. Now what's really cool about this is the lower and upper indices of this sum have z Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add z to k 
thus increasing the denominator of this by z, but because I'm adding z to k, that means that I have to subtract z from both of the indices so that the sum is still the same. I hope that's clear as to what I'm doing. If this isn't all clear, just watch through it again. Um, and it's each each step is, is, is quite simple. It's sort of the combination of them all because this is rather symbol heavy that, that gets a little annoying. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm replacing 1 over k with 1 over k plus z. Because I'm increasing the input of the sum by z, I have to decrease the indices by z. So instead of starting at z plus 1, we're just starting at 1. And instead of ending at m plus z, we're just ending at m. I hope that's clear. But the really beautiful thing about that is, now both of these sums start at 1 and end at m. Which means I can bring them together and combine them. So this sum, because these are this, uh, this is like over the same indices from k to m, I can sort of just write them under one sigma symbol. So I'm going to erase this one and simply just subtract 1 over k plus z from 1 over k, because that's what I'm doing. So this is what we have now. This is the sum from k equals 1 to m of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus z. Using, um, you know, just common denominators, we can multiply k plus z on the top and bottom of this fraction and multiply k on the top and bottom of this fraction, and you'll see that we get this fraction here. If you just do the math and combine those two fractions, you'll see that we get z divided by k times z plus k. That's what you get when you combine those two fractions together. And this is equal to the z harmonic number. But now, what's so cool about this is that all we have to do is let m go to infinity. And the only thing that's m at this point is the upper index of this sum. So when we let m go to infinity, we now have an infinite sum representation of the zeth harmonic number, right? It just goes from 1 over, from k equals 1 to infinity of z divided by the index k times the quantity z plus the index k equals the zeth harmonic number. So now we have two fantastic representations for the harmonic numbers. We have a finite sum that we showed before, and now we have an infinite sum. But the cool thing about this infinite sum is it tells us, if we were to extend the domain of the harmonic numbers to all complex numbers, it tells us exactly which complex numbers we can't use. Because look at the denominator of this. k is running from 1 to infinity, which means k hits every single natural number or positive integer, right? So any z that is a negative integer will make this factor of z plus k 0 at some point, right? Because say we pick z to be negative 1006, eventually k is going to get to 1006. And if you combine 1006 with negative 1006, you end up with 0 in the denominator. So if you pick z to be a negative integer, one of these terms in here will eventually be infinitely large, whether positive or negative. So we can't let z be a negative integer. But there's nothing about this definition that restricts it for any other number, which is to say that this infinite sum representation tells us exactly what complex numbers we can't use for harmonic numbers. It's no longer restricted to just the positive integers or just the real numbers that are greater than negative 1. This is now the point where we can say that the harmonic numbers can be perfectly defined in a continuous manner, analytically continued to the rest of the complex plane, for every number except the negative integers. Because z, if it were a negative integer, would cause one of these terms of this infinite sum to be 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. So we finally figured out what the restrictions are. Quick little thing, this channel has an Instagram, so it is at what the hectagon, of course, and it has a Twitter, and it is of course naturally, of course naturally, naturally, of course, also at what the hectagon, and my email is the incorrectly spelled what the hect Agon, why spell check before you make the email, right? That you can't then change at gmail.com. Now, all of these are in the description if you don't want to have to somehow watch the video and pause it and actually write it down. That's the, uh, that's the stuff. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,